Hi everyone, this is Hardy. In this lecture we will finish off our Hidden Path project with some photo textures and final polish. So let's get started. So off camera I've pasted in a bunch of really cool rocky texture photos and I've put those in a layer group that I'm just calling photos. So as you can see we can hide the whole group, move these around individually and just sort of get a look at everything. Now I'm gonna make each of these photos available to you to download but there are tons of really great free photo libraries out there so I'll link you to some great websites for that too. A lot of these are mine or they are free artistic common market licensing. So all of these are fully free to use. You definitely don't want to find anything on Google Images that might be copyrighted. So a little word of caution there. These are all definitely free and permissions free to use. So what we're going to do is use soft light blending mode to use these to add a little bit of texture and color interest to our layers. Now the way we've got our our image set up here organized into layer groups will really help us here because we're going to apply these textures to each distant level individually. So we'll start with this far distance area. I've grabbed one photo and I've put it in a new group called photo textures. Now we set that photo group to soft light and that blending mode change will totally change the way that this photo looks. We're still seeing all of that really cool rendering we did on the layers beneath but we're getting some color variation and a lot of the cool texture from this photograph. So we're sort of taking all the good without covering up the really cool work that we've already done. And from there it's just a matter of copying and manipulating these photos to make them fit so I've, I've adjusted the opacity, I've done a little bit of transforming and some erasing away so that we're not seeing those margins. And here I'll apply that paint daubs filter to make it seem not quite so photographic. I still want it all to feel like a painting. So from here we just sort of repeat this process. I'll sort of do the same thing on the middle ground layer, creating a new layer group called photo textures. This time I'll command click on our middle ground paint layer and create a layer mask and what that does is only lets this photo exist within the selection so that masked out layer mask on the photo textures group makes sure that this photo doesn't go outside the line so to speak and same deal I'm just sort of transforming and manipulating this photo to see what kind of cool little happy accidents I can stumble across a lot of times these photos really come in handy on the areas that we've left kind of dark. So shadow areas that you left nondescript, you can really add a lot of interest, some color variation, all kinds of cool effects. So already these little rocky facets from this photo are really adding a ton of great interest and, and extra detail to these areas that I didn't really render with our custom shapes rendering. So a really cool way to add a lot of punch and pop to your image in this little final polish step. It's very subtle but I think it's important and, and really adds a little bit of a final polish, some professionalism to your image. Remember this is the last step that we'll have for our, our, our image here so we want to make sure to finish strong, give it the best ending we possibly can because the next step would be sending it to a client or a teacher, whatever the case may be. So we want to make sure that we're, we're leaving on a really strong note. But just jumping around, I've, I've got that photos layer group at the top of my layer stack here so that I can just go grab them individually and drop them into the layer groups below as needed. It, it starts to seem like a lot of layers to manage, but this really is the best way I've come up with to organize things. Just putting them in groups, moving things around as needed. It keeps everything organized and, and nicely ordered so that you can always find what you need. I love this photo, this really cool kind of greenish sort of stratified layers of stone. I, I don't know how this rocky formation could have happened but it's such a cool picture and I, I've really found a lot of great uses for this one. So we're gonna make heavy use of that here, a really unique rocky texture and it'll really make our cave seem kind of otherworldly and magical. That's definitely what we're going for here. So I'm going to copy this one and manipulate it quite a bit. And remember, since it's inside of that photo textures layer group, and that has a mask applied to it, we don't have to worry about these textures going outside of the lines. It would never accidentally go out to our distant layer, for example. So a great way to set that up, you never have to think about drawing inside of the lines. It's all 
set up pretty automatically for you. And as you can see, I'm finding some cool uses for this texture, even in all kinds of different orientations. It's really working. So I went ahead and copied all of those photos together. You don't really have to, but I thought I'd do a little clone stamping, so I uh, wanted to have it all merged onto one layer. I've grabbed this really cool kind of bluish green rocky texture just to bring a little bit of a different flavor. I don't want everything to be so one note orange and red. So this nearer side cave wall here, it's a really cool opportunity to apply some of these neat bluish green colors. And I love that effect. It really came out well. It makes those little rocky surfaces that we defined with our custom shapes really pop. It looks like something very new and interesting using that same kind of algae pattern to make this path, this footpath on the, the cave floor here look really realistic as well. And notice I'm adjusting the opacity of these individual photos that we're using a good bit. Sometimes they can just be too bold or too strong. They kind of take over. You never want them to totally kill any of your painting that you've done. These are just sort of a little accent, something extra to give your image a little bit of extra interest and polish maybe even a little bit of color variation, but we never want it to get so dominant that it just looks like a photo collage. That's definitely not what we want here. So we have that video specifically devoted to just the artful use of photo textures. This is supposed to be a very subtle technique that we just use to, to help a little bit. Never want it to take over though. Hope that makes sense. Applying the same kind of effect to our foreground layer. I kind of like working from far away and work up to the nearer ground. So here we are in our near ground here, the foreground, adding a little bit of texture and manipulating that a bit to make it fit the color scheme a little better. Didn't want it to get too green. And just trying a few other things. This one's kind of a strange angle we've got here. And I, I want it to be interesting since it's so close. However, the focal point will be that flower that we're going to paint in. So now we've got all of our photo textures applied. It's time to do a little bit of organization. I'm going to group everything, make a copy, and then merge it. This is going to sort of simplify things. Now we keep all of those editable layers in a group, but once we copy it, like we'll do here, copy the group, and then hit Command E to merge. That gives us everything on a sort of flattened layer so that we can start editing it as just one layer. So that copy, put it in a group, copy it, and then merge. That sort of lets you edit it without worrying about editing each layer. I hope that makes sense. It's a way to sort of simplify things as we get to more of these final polish steps. So in our layer groups, I'm really just working on one layer per group, but I have kept those custom shapes layers handy too in case I want to command click them for a selection. So that's how I have things organized at this point. It's time to start doing some painting and final polish really start giving this some individual flair and, and a more hand-painted feel. So I'm going to use that lasso technique to, to make some selections of some little rocky facets. I want to start painting in a little sunlight shining really brightly on this little edges of the cave wall. It might actually be catching a little bit of direct sunlight. So I'm painting directly onto this middle ground paint layer. And as you can see, we're just adding a little highlight. Grabbing a brush now, this is where I'm going to sort of start freestyling a bit, do some hand painting just to start making this seem a little less photographic and formulaic and really give it some hand of the artist type treatment. So for, you, for this, I just use this really standard brush. It's just sort of a squashed circle at an angle, sort of something I usually use for calligraphy line work, but for some reason, it gives us kind of a nice painterly effect when we're, we're adding in these little details. So I'm doing these little extra lines, all kinds of little cracks in detail. I'm just grabbing local colors by hitting Alt to grab something with the, the eyedropper tool, and then just painting in a little bit of line detail. And really, this is one of the, the only hand painting type parts of this process. In each of our projects in this course, it's interesting you feel like you are doing something by hand at the very beginning when we sketch and do our concept work but thereafter it really feels like a lot of formulaic stuff just we're making decisions and using Photoshop tools to get results only at the very end at this step does it really start feeling like a painting again so 
I always want you guys to feel that creative process coming through. That's why this is always a great way to end a project, is really get that hand of the artist feel back into the mix. We've done a lot of great work with all of this digital magic Photoshop tools to get all of these amazing effects. But now that we have that framework in place, let's really see what we can do artistically with our hands and finish on a really nice, charming, hand of the artist type note here. I hope that makes sense. So just a little bit of highlight and shadow, just painting in some little details by hand, just to give it a nice hand wrought feel. Another thing I'm doing is sort of adding a different plane to some of these rocky outcroppings. Make it look like these are really jutting out. So we've got some little features sort of receding inwards into those dark cracks. Gives it a whole new dimension, something really cool, and sort of sets it up to give way to those interesting rocky photo textures that we've got there, those little stratified, linear looking elements. I thought this could use one more little bit of custom shape work just to add a little bit more interest to this corner. Things are sort of fading off to darkness here. So it's never too late to jump back to earlier steps in the process. You never have to follow this step by step rigidly. It's just a nice sequence of events that I usually try to do. But as you can see, we can definitely jump back to any earlier phase, use these techniques in any way that works for you because results are really all that matters. So as you can see, I've got all of these little details on one layer. I think they're adding a ton of charm and interest and a really great hand of the artist feel to our painting here so that it doesn't seem just like a ton of custom shapes and photo textures. Although we are certainly relying on those primarily to get these effects, always want to be able to see a little bit of artistic hand painting in everything that we do. And I think you'll always have a, a much nicer experience if you try to do that yourself. So I think our middle ground layer is really coming together nicely. Doing a little bit of work to try and find out little extra areas where I can refine things. Working in that negative space on the outside of the custom shapes just to see if anything needs to be darkened. I've applied a paint daubs filter to this near ground as well just to, to give it a little more of an artistic hand wrought feel and sort of blending this out so it's not such a defined little hill in the foreground. It's sort of becoming part of that footpath leading away. It gives us a nice continuity out to the outside of our image. And again, I keep imagining some little character exploring this path, kind of peeking around. It's such a nice focal point. It's always nice when it's very obvious where you would place a character in your painting. That's uh, usually a sign that you're doing something right in your environment artwork. I'm putting a little crack in this near ground. Had an idea that this should be kind of a craggy look, so I'm even bringing in this cracked paint texture just to give it a little bit of an, a different feel. And I even set that on hard light, which is a little different from what I usually do with soft light. Just wanted to give it a different feel. Darkening that one a little bit, and that's really cool. That photo, very luckily, really fits with everything. So after that paint daubs filter, that really gives us an entirely different look. So now I'm trying to decide how I want this flower, this magic flower that is the whole subject we've been waiting to add, how I want to incorporate that. I'm thinking it'll be some crack in this near ground, like it's got roots growing out of some little gap in the rocks, but just sort of playing around with a few ideas to see what I can do really to make that work. I think this little hole that we've got will work, so I'm going to get started on an implication of a little stem here, just suggesting some very basic elements. I want it to look like it's really in a spotlight. So I've got a really nice highlight, very bright green, stark lights and darks here to give it a little bit of interest. And here comes that color that we have been waiting for, this really nice bluish green. It just really sets off the entire rest of the image because it's all so warm. So many reds and oranges that it's almost like this, this image is just parched and, and needs some cooler colors. So that's why this is really a very satisfying part of this painting because it's just been dying for some cool colors. And here we are with our main focal point adding in something that's just such a beautiful color complement to the rest of our color scheme and it's just working so nicely. You could really just 
even add a blue dot to this place on the canvas and it would look kind of nice because of our composition we have set up and also because of the color complement nature. Blue and orange always look great together because of their relationship on the color wheel. So this is just really set up to, to be a no-brainer and this will always work if you use these compositional tools and these color complements. A great device to, to lead focus we're telling a really cool story here. It's all really working nicely and sort of a moment in our painting that we've been working up to for, for most of the painting, setting up all of these really warm colors in this specific composition. It was all to get us to this point where we have this really nice, cool colored focal point to just set the whole thing off. And just adding little petals, little flowery details, not putting a whole lot of time into this, it's it's pretty abstract, but from here I've created a merged version of everything. So see that layer called merged? I just copied everything and made a new merged layer. You do that by command shift C and then V to paste it. So that's how we made that merged layer. And now I'm adding a bloom effect. I've created a new layer named bloom and I've set it to lighten blending mode. And with my brush and color dodge, you can see I just added some really bright light. It's kind of a camera lens effect where that light is just burning through and over brightening everything. Really adds a lot of drama. And you can see that that's really working nicely. Now we're going to add some rays of light. As we did in our skies demonstration, we just dab in some paint. We want these light beams to really be shining down on this flower. And instead of motion blur, I'm going to do a radial blur set on zoom mode. See how that works? It's very similar to motion blur, but it pinches all of these elements to a center of a, a kind of a vanishing point. So it sort of builds in a little bit of perspective. But it's practically the same thing as motion blur, just changing the angles a little bit. And then I'm doing a little bit of that myself with distort. So a lot of these effects are very similar. But wow, that really obviously brings a lot of attention to our main focal point here. Even adds a little cool background story, like maybe this flower was able to grow because that's the one spot where the light shines, something like that. So always, always cool to add a little bit of instant drama. These rays of light can definitely do this. Now let's add some little, little debris, little dust particles kind of dancing in this little spotlight we've got. And essentially this is just a round brush that I've adjusted the spacing on so that it sort of scatters around all of these little dots. That's all there is to it. If you need to check out how to do this, just check out our custom brushes lecture. But basically it's a round brush that I increase the spacing on. I'll make this brush available to download if you'd like, but it, it's very, very simple. I'll make a copy of this and then put a Gaussian blur on the copy just to make it look like these particles are kind of glowing in the light. Then let's play around with blending mode a little bit, see if overlay works. That's cool, but it's disappearing a little, so I am making some copies, trying a few different things. Then we'll mask the whole thing out, make it the mask entirely black, and I'll just paint in some white to reveal just as if these dust particles are only visible in this little beam of light. Really gives it such a cool cinematic quality. And there we go. We've got some nice camera lighting effects. A beam of light, the bloom effect of that over brightening. And that is really, really bringing this together really nicely. It, it is extremely clear what our, our focal point is. And that's what we're after. A lot of attention drawing devices at work here to make that look really cool. I'm going to do a copy merged again. Again, Command Shift C and then Command V to paste and, and that'll bring in a merged layer. I've got Color Dodge set up and I'm just over brightening a few areas just to put a little bit of pop and extra shine in a few spots just to make some of these areas really bright. Really want those to be burning bright and, and bring a lot of attention to them. Maybe even add a, a little bit of a blue glow to this flower just to make it seem a tiny bit magical, like it's glowing. And I think that's awesome. With that, I'd say we just about have a finished project. Congratulations on completing the Hidden Path project. I hope you really enjoyed this first full-scale environment project. Let's take a look back at our project steps and see how far we've come. 
We started with a rough sketch to get our main concept and composition in place. Then we used photos and some rough painting to establish our rough color scheme. From there we used custom shapes to add some depth and rendering detail. Finally, we finished things off with some photo textures and final polish. All in all, we came from a blank canvas to a finished product loaded with depth, atmosphere, and story. A very successful first outing. Up next, join me for our next project where we'll take what we've learned here and bring it to the next level.